Good afternoon you absolute A-class specimens of positivity. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve and you're watching a Bushcraft with Steve Outdoors. <coughs> now ladies and gents, before we carry on with today's video, please excuse all of this. I have recently just come down with yet another bug. I know, shock horror, I never get ill me. Um, but I'm starting to believe that I am on a virus hit list and they must know that my immune system is about as robust as candy floss. So on to today's video. Now, if you watched the last video on the channel, guys, you'll be very aware, I have recently just picked up a new Bushcraft pack, the Savota 339 Saddle Sack. Now, this is a pack I'm going to be using in future for my generalized sort of Bushcraft kit and camps going forward into the summer. Today, I'm going to show you the contents I plan on carrying with this kit. So let's find a nice clearing in this woodland and crack on with today's video. Right, my good friends, before we even get onto the contents of the pack, I would just like to um, point out and make reference to the pack's ability to freestand, which is a really, really handy feature, and I do like that. Right, so on the very, very bottom, externally on the pack, we have my outhouse oil floor mat. We're going to put that out now so we can lay the rest of the stuff on there. So, starting with the two side bottle pockets, I keep in these. First of all, we have a leather strop with some green compound. Picked this up from the bus crash show last year and I just keep that in a spare tent peg bag. Um, always handy to have in your kit. Second of all, the saw I intend to be using throughout the duration of the spring months going into the summer is the Silky Gone By 240. Um, a fantastic saw and I think it offers more than you'll need um, in them sort of months anyway. The most you're going to be doing is building shelters, maybe a bit of carving. Absolutely perfect. I have not one but two of the Swedish military um, black water bottles. These also come complete with the aluminium cups. I've kept one of them on the other bottle and that is it for that side. On the other side we have the titanium splitter from Full Windsor. This is an absolutely fantastic cooking tool. I never leave home without this. This is a um, definite part of my cook kit. So there we have. Titanium weighs nothing. Together they make a great um, sort of set of tongs apart. You've got a knife edge on this side and an um, egg flipper. And on this side you've got your spork and spoon. Again, absolutely fantastic um, tool. And this was very kindly sent to the channel a few years ago now, along with the bespoke carry kit, carry case. Also in the side pocket, I have my Olight Seeker 4 Pro. This is a new addition to the kit. This is a 4,600 lumen uh, flashlight, I do believe. Absolutely fantastic. Um, has many modes and it is just an absolute beast. And for some reason that's not working. Oh, yeah it is. Ow. Oh, bloody hell. Right. Um, I do like the plastic carry case for this. This can clip to your belt. You also get a um, an adhesive catch that you can link this to so you can have that in your car. Something like that. It also charges from the holster, which is very handy. That is uh, all I can see now is bleeding dots. <clears throat> this is the second Finnish, or sorry, Swedish uh, military bottle. I keep one cup on the bottle just for scooping out of the river. Um, this one's full because I'm going to have a coffee in a little while. And that is the full contents from the pockets on the side. Second of all, on the side of the pack, I carry my Grandfather's Brooks small forest axe. Fantastic tool, I do love this, more than one man should love an axe, but um, this has been with me, uh, with me for a good 14, 15 years now. Fantastic tool. That slips nicely in the side, you can also keep bigger saws and tools in the uh, laces on the side of the pack as well. On the bottom of the pack, the front pocket in here, this is all of my sort of uh, tool sharpening, fire starting kits. And we have a stove in here as well. So first of all, we have my Helicon Text Woodcrafter gloves or Bushcraft gloves. These are soon to be replaced by a lovely pair of Crud Molgs. Um, they are winging, currently winging their way to me from Sweden. Um, these have been an absolutely fantastic pair of gloves. I've had these for a good four or five years now. Um, they have sustained a bit of damage to one of the thumbs and that's because I'm left-handed. And I do grab coals and hot pots off the uh, fireplace with these. But again, they're still in good nick. And once that thumb has been repaired, um, I'm guessing you'll get many more years use out of these. 
absolutely fantastic pair of gloves. We have my, um, this is my axe stone from Grandfather's Brooks. This is for the axe, double sided, coarse side and a fine side. Works a treat. We also have my headlight. This is the Perrin 2, I think. I'll put it up on the screen, I'm not 100% sure. This is another recent um, addition to the kit and this was sent for review. Unfortunately, the second channel got deleted, so this never got reviewed. Um, I will um, touch on this in the future, along with the other all light there. <coughs> this is a new um, a new tin I picked up from a local um, bushcraft shop in Stockport, a town near me. This is now my fire kit. We have all sorts in there: um, birch bark, tinders. Spare lighter, some fat wood, a couple of my um, discs, wax discs, and some mad made tinders as well. Um, I used to keep a char tin full of tinder as well, but I had now um, carried two different types. So this one is my char tin. And in there, we have lots of charred substance as well as my um, fire, um, my steel, and a piece of flint in there also. And just pull it out without getting it everywhere there we go so now i have a fire kit with tinders dry tinders and we have the char tin kit as well this works a treat in dry weather you can just uh, put a shower of sparks in there drop your tinder in blow it into flame and last of all in the front pocket we have my bushcraft essentials bush box xl and um, this is a leather case i picked up for a, a couple of years ago there we go, and this is the Titanium um, Bush Box XL. A lot of people have been asking how it has fared through use. I think I've had this for about two years now, so it's safe to say that is the extent of the warping. I would say it's no more significant than the actual steel version I had, um, and it's still fully operational, still folds out absolutely fantastic and easy, and it is still my go-to stove. In there we also have the elongated grill and a spare grill that I can just drop on top for burgers. That is the external pockets emptied. Let's get into the top. Going straight into the top compartment. Again, very simple pack. There is no internal pockets inside this pack. It's just one large main dump pouch. Uh, the top is held secure by a drawstring tab. And straight on top of the pack, we have my Jaeger Steck Panner Folding Carbon Steel Fry Pan. Uh, there is a review for this on the channel. Absolutely fantastic piece of gear. Um, and I've fried many a egg, sausage and steak in this pan. And it is one of my favourite pieces of gear to use. On top of the pack, we have my DD Super Light 3x3 tarp. Um, this is a Sun Island tarp, very, very light, um, easily packable, and this is the second one I've had in about 14 years. Uh, so they do uh, last quite a while as long as you keep the errant sparks away from them. Um, and there we've got a couple of carabiners and the gar lines. On top of there, we have my possibles pouch, and this covers pretty much medicine, fire starting, sewing. Um, things like that. Inside you'll find pretty much bits and bobs of absolutely everything, tweezers, spare lighters, earplugs, spare torch, thread, um, wax, glue sticks, all sorts in there. I think there's a head net in the back. We have some oil wax just to keep the blades protected. In wet weather we have a small Leatherman Micro. Probably more stuff they actually need in there but um, it's like the old saying goes, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. On the front we have a an old sailor's treen and this has many pins and needles in there for sewing. And that's the Maxpedition Fatty. Next to that is my cut kit or my brew kit. 
This is just a 750ml titanium mug. Um, the lid is not for this pot, but it does fit a lot nicer than the one that came with it. Um, oh, it's got a dent on there, I've dropped it somewhere. And inside there we have, just for quick brews in the mornings, the Asoto Windmaster. Absolutely phenomenal uh, gas powered stove this, it will boil your water in under three minutes. Um, I kind of fell on that in a, a couple of videos ago and I've damaged the top but it still works absolutely fine. Uh, so yeah, a bit gutted but happy at the same time. Uh, there's one of the gases for it. I do refill these on my own um, using a butane mix. So if you want to see how you do that there is a video on my channel for that. And that is the 750ml pot that can be used for cooking over the fire uh, and just for drinking, general drinking. This is just the mesh bag for the cup and cup kit. You can use this for straining water, use it as a pre-filter or just to try and keep the contents of the pot warm. This has very recently, um, as of last week or the weekend, been sent to the channel uh, by a very good friend and follower. Thank you all again. This is a David Fryer's large zipped pouch. Um, David makes these on his own and it is absolutely fantastic quality, I must say. Um, the stitching, the, the materials used, everything is just absolutely A1. So this is now my dedicated coffee and brew kit. In there I'll keep all my coffees, my preferred coffees. These are the... Uh... Oh. These are the ready-made coffees you just add water to. Oh, that's a new one, Rwanda. I don't think I've had that one before. Try that in a bit. Um, so yeah, be your own barista brew coffees. We also keep in there a couple of sugars. I don't have sugar in my brews, but um, just for anyone else. Sugar and salt, and I pinched some more of the wooden cutlery. Always handy in a pinch, if not for tinder, if you forget your own cutlery. That is that. Next layer, guys, we have my much-loved Ben Orford wool blanket. Um, this is very, very warm. I'm not sure what wool it is, but this does a fantastic job, again, of keeping you warm, and this is uh, very useful for just keeping you warm in the morning around the fire while you're having a brew, um, or as an extra layer in your hammock. Fantastic quality. Again, I picked this up at the Bushcraft Show last year. <clears throat> Going on to the sleep system now guys, in fact no first we'll just have, we have a little baggie here and this has got a um, bank line in it, just extra spare cordage. It's important to carry spare cordage around with you because cordage, cordage is one of the most uh, difficult things to reproduce in the woodland. So we've got um, some, I think it's number 30 bank line in there. I usually use that with the um, Spain, Bushcraft Spain tarp. The sleep system for this kit will be hammocking and this is the one tigress compound hammock absolutely phenomenal hammock i've never had much use with hammocks in the past and um, this is the most comfiest one i have used and it is pretty much a full modular system you've got um, a dew cover in there you've got the bug net um, loads of adjustability and again it is just a really really comfortable hammock this hasn't been reviewed yet this will be coming to the channel for a review in the very very near future my cover layer will be the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket. Um, this in conjunction with the wool should be sufficient, plus with what I'm wearing. Um, it's actually warmer than it looks. It's only a small bag, uh, a small quilt, but it is very, very warm. And I like the fabrics as well. The mat for the hammock is the Thermaras Pro Light. This is the three quarter length um, Pro Light, and this is more than sufficient enough for the hammock. Um, covers just your back and your backside, keeps you more than warm enough. I have had that, I must say, um, an absolute age, and I've sustained one puncture on that. Since repairing that, it's been absolutely right as rain. This again, guys, was a very generous gift sent to the channel by Mr. Steve Abner. Um, this is this is fast becoming one of my favourite bit of sleep kits, and um, I do need to get a review on this because it is, again, a fantastic bit of kit. So this is a double-sided um, pillowcase. And the idea behind this is the slippy side like this um, is to be used for carrying all your gear to keep, the, you know, things that are uh, precious, um, delicate, things like that you can keep in the pack for transportation. 
and the weather zip, the zip is sorry, weatherproofed as you can see there. But on the inside, when you've emptied all your gear, this is now my warm bag. So we have an extra pillow there. Um, gloves. Um, that is the Trachology pillow. This one is for under my head or under my legs, depending. Um, we have an extra warm garment in there. That's just a Ridgeline fleece top. Another glove and a hat. Um, no matter what the weather is like, summer, spring, whatever in the, the um, UK, you're guaranteed at night you're going to be chilly. So always carry a warm bag. I do anyway. So again, the idea behind this pillowcase, lads, lads, guys, guys and girls, sorry, is once you've emptied your kit from it um, at the night, you can then stuff this with your spare clothing. Um, maybe another pillow and when you've zipped that back up that then makes for a very very comfortable fleece pillow and it is extremely comfortable as well and it's nice for the hammock because it just sinks into that top sort of ridge you get you to the top of the um, the line there and again keeps you very very warm very very comfortable Fantastic bit of kit. That is it guys, we have hit the bottom of the pack. And I think that is pretty much everything covered, surprising. Um, I did want to keep this pack sort of light, I don't want to take stuff I'm not going to be using, um, just for the fun of it. Um, I do want just the necessities of um, this pack. I have noticed I did not put my Sawyer filter in there. Um, I honestly can't think where that is. But I do plan on picking up a Grail um, Geopress when I get back down to the Bushcraft Show this year, as well as a few other things I've got on my shopping list. So that pretty much covers the content. Let me sort it all out onto the map and I'll get you a better shot of it and you can have a look for yourself. Right then, ladies and gents. So as well as the main kit in the pack, that will be carried in conjunction with my belt kit, which comprises of... My main fire steel. The tinder pouch on the side which carries my wax pads. We also have my small fire starting um, kit with the Victorian Ox Huntsman. This comes with me again everywhere and we have a small redundancy torch there. I think that puts out 120 lumens and that is USB-C rechargeable. So I've always got at least two or three, if I can stay where that is, um, two or three ways of illuminating a subject and that is the pouch on the back. We also have a um, foraging dump pouch on the side. This again was picked up from the bus crash show last year but it hasn't been used. I do plan on getting out and using this for something or other this year. Um, it's not bad quality actually, I think I picked this up from the Bushcraft store shop. A nice, uh, I think it's a treated cotton canvas there. And the main belt carry um, going on, for now anyway, knife wise, will be the Falkneven S1XB. You'll have seen this many, many times on the channel now, um, absolutely fantastic blade in my opinion. I have done many things with this knife including food prep, um, spoon carving, it battens like an absolute beast with its 6mm spine there. Um, it's great, not the best but great at throwing sparks and it is very very comfortable as well even with them thin scales on the handle. It is a laminated cost steel um, and it is absolutely razor sharp which is where I like to keep all my knives. That is kept in its sheath with a couple of DC4 stones and a CC4 stone. And again, I've treated them to a little bit of stropping compound. And that just carries my badge on the front. I also carry the R2 Scout from Falkneven on my neck. But as you know, um, I do a lot of filming outside. So I can't wear the knife around my neck with the mic because that interferes uh, like that. And you don't want to be hearing that all the way through the videos. 
Later on in the year, guys, when the weather does become a little bit drier, I'll be swapping this knife out for the custom Dragonfly Bushcrafter belt knife. Very, very kindly sent over and built to my exact specifications by Graham at GT Knives. That is an all one tool steel, so it's best off being used um, in the drier months of the year. Just keeps down on maintenance. Um, again, that is an absolutely fantastic razor sharp tool. Um, and there is a video on the channel for that, so you can go find it and have a look. Right, my awesome friends. So I now have my dangly bits hanging out everywhere, so I'd better not be hanging around the woodlands for too long. I'm going to get a lovely hot cup of coffee on and try and soothe my throat. So I hope you've enjoyed a look at the gear I plan to carry throughout the spring and summer months. Again, it's a kit I've used before, barring a couple of pouches that have been sent to the channel recently. Um, it's definitely a kit that works for me. It offers me all the essentials I need without all the extras you tend to throw in a larger pack. If you good folk think I might have missed something from the kit, please do let me know down in the comments. Or if this kit has given you some ideas yourself, please again let me know, I'd be interested to know. I do plan on getting out with this kit for a camp in the next couple of weeks, so do stay tuned to the channel. If you do feel sorry for me for being poorly at this time, please do leave a sympathy like on the video and also consider subscribing so you don't miss me ill in the future. But until the next one guys, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty. See you again guys, bye bye.